Composite promises speed but demands specialists. Aluminum offers familiarity but concentrates stress. Steel forgives impacts that destroy alternatives permanently. Ten garage aircraft reveal which material actually delivers on promises versus marketing hype. Metal versus composite, which is best garage aircraft material to build? The Landcare legacy erupted under the home-built scene in the 1990s as composite construction's bold answer to aluminum dominance. This wasn't gradual evolution, it was revolution, wrapped in carbon fiber and fiberglass layers that promised speeds aluminum could never achieve without tremendous weight penalties. Lance Niebauer bet everything on one radical premise. If builders accepted composite complexity, they'd unlock performance previously reserved for certified aircraft, costing five times more. Composite construction demanded entirely different skill sets from traditional builders. No bucking bars or rivet guns. Instead, mold preparation, vacuum bagging, resin mixing, and curing schedules replaced familiar metalworking. The learning curve intimidated many, but completed aircraft rewarded patients with sleek surfaces producing zero drag from protruding fasteners. Maintenance told composites other story, Impact damage from hangar rash or hard landings required specialized repair knowledge rather than simple skin replacements. Inspections demanded different eyes looking for delamination and hidden structural issues invisible to casual observation without specialized equipment. Insurance companies charged premiums reflecting higher risks and repair costs compared to aluminum alternatives. The Landcare legacy proved composite construction could deliver performance justifying complexity and cost increases when speed became paramount priority. But composites weren't universal solutions. Different missions demanded different material philosophies. Metal sheets were waiting in workshops across America, ready to demonstrate that conventional materials could still dominate when designers refused compromise. Randy Schlitter looked at aluminum sheets and saw freedom from composite complexity without sacrificing modern capability. The RANS S21, outbound, launched in 2015 as all metal, answered a tube and fabric limitations without composite headaches or specialized repair requirements. Aluminum construction meant familiar tools, straightforward inspections, and repairs accomplishable in any garage with basic metalworking skills passed down through generations. The all-metal structure delivered predictability that composites and fabric couldn't match across decades of service life. Corrosion became primary enemy, manageable through proper surface treatment and storage rather than mysterious delamination or fabric degradation from ultraviolet exposure over time. Useful loads approached 700 pounds with fuel capacity enabling five-hour endurance, transforming the outbound into legitimate cross-country machine for serious touring. Build times averaged 1,200 hours for experienced builders, significantly less than composite projects, demanding meticulous layup schedules and environmental controls. The kit arrived with pre-punched holes and matched components, eliminating guesswork during assembly and reducing errors from improper drilling or alignment. Builders appreciated seeing structure clearly Aluminum's inherent inspectability meant every rivet, every joint remained visible throughout aircraft's life without special equipment. The S21 outbound demonstrated aluminum remained relevant when designers prioritized practicality over ultimate performance, chasing diminishing returns. But aluminum told only partial story of metal construction's versatility in modern home building. Steel tubes were being welded in mountain state workshops, creating frameworks that laughed at rough strips and forgave mistakes that would destroy more delicate structures permanently. Welders in backcountry Idaho understood something composite builders never would. When you belly land on a rocky ridge, steel forgives what fiberglass shatters. The Bearhawk Patrol combined 4130 crumbly steel II fuselage with fabric covering, creating airframes that absorbed punishment and kept flying when aluminum buckled permanently. Bob Barrows designed this machine for real-world abuse, not hangar queen perfection. Steel tube construction with fabric covering delivered repairability that saved expeditions and potentially lives in remote locations. A torn fabric section could be patched with needle, thread, and dope in wilderness camps. Buckled steel tubes could be straightened or replaced with basic welding equipment available at any rural shop. The useful load exceeded 1,000 pounds. Meaningful fuel, camping gear, supplies, and two adults departed for week-long explorations without weight compromises. The patrol's steel framework weighed more than equivalent aluminum structures, but strength per pound calculations told different story when impact resistance factored into equations. Welded joints distributed loads across entire structures rather than concentrating stresses at rivet holes prone to cracking under repeated cycles. Fabric covering reduced labor compared to riveting hundreds of aluminum skins while providing easy inspection access to internal structures. The Bearhawk Patrol proved steel tube construction remained unmatched for backcountry operations where repairability trumped speed or aesthetic perfection. 
While crumbly tubes defended backcountry strips, another all-metal approach was demonstrating that aluminum could achieve remarkable performance when designers optimized through decades of refinement. Richard Van Grunsven stared at aluminum sheets and saw potential that others missed entirely through decades of incremental refinement. The Vans RV14 and RV14A represented evolutionary pinnacle of all-metal home-built construction, delivering 175-knot crews from Lycoming IO 390 engines, producing 210 horsepower. This wasn't steel's brute strength or composite's slippery surfaces. This was aluminum optimized to perfection. The all-metal construction used proven techniques accessible to builders with moderate skills and standard tools found in any well-equipped garage. Pre-punched skins, matched holes, and comprehensive instructions reduced errors and accelerated builds, averaging 1,800 hours for first-time constructors. Side-by-side, -side, seating in spacious cockpits welcomed passengers, while useful loads approaching 1,000 pounds allowed full fuel and baggage without compromises. Vans achieved aluminum's performance ceiling through accumulated knowledge that no single breakthrough could replicate overnight. Every rib spacing, every skin thickness, every structural junction reflected lessons learned from predecessors and feedback from builders worldwide. Insurance companies offered favorable rates recognizing proven safety records and straightforward maintenance requirements. The RV14 series demonstrated that aluminum reached its zenith through relentless refinement rather than revolutionary breakthroughs changing everything overnight. But tube and fabric was mounting its own comeback through modern materials and clever engineering, proving oldest construction methods could teach newest generations about simplicity. Mountain pilots in Alaska needed aircraft that could be repaired with duct tape and determination when things went wrong 200 miles from civilization. The Just Aircraft Highlander embraced steel tube construction with fabric covering creating machines that weighed less than 1,000 pounds empty, yet hauled useful loads exceeding 800 pounds from absurdly short strips. Troy Woodland designed this bird for operators who measured runways in dozens of feet rather than thousands, where getting in mattered more than getting there fast. The 4130 steel tube framework provided strength where it counted, while keeping complexity minimal for builders without extensive metalworking backgrounds. Fabric covering reduced construction time compared to riveting aluminum skins. The doped fabric stretched tight over frames in days rather than weeks spent bucking rivets. Rotax 912 engines, producing 100 horsepower, delivered adequate performance while maintaining fuel economy that extended range beyond 500 nautical miles at economy cruise settings around 85 knots. Short takeoff and landing performance defined the Highlander's reputation. Departures under 300 feet and arrivals under 200 feet opened wilderness access that aluminum birds could only dream about from their longer runways. The high wing protected occupants during off-airport landings while providing excellent visibility for spotting wildlife, obstacles, and marginal landing sites. Conventional gear with massive tundra tires absorbed punishment from rocks, ruts, and river bars that would destroy tricycle configurations instantly. The Just Aircraft Highlander proved tube and fabric construction remained supremely relevant for specialized missions, prioritizing capability over speed or sophistication. Yet, steel tubes and fabric weren't the only path to short field dominance and backcountry capability. Aluminum was preparing its own response, demonstrating that sheet metal could conquer rough country through different engineering approaches entirely. Daryl Murphy watched aluminum home builds chase speed and decided someone needed to build the anti-racehorse instead. The Murphy Rebel attacked short takeoff and landing missions with all metal construction that aluminum builders claimed couldn't match tube and fabric capability in bush operations. Conventional wisdom said metal meant heavy and heavy meant long runways, but Murphy proved conventional wisdom wrong through clever design and refusal, accepting limitations others considered inevitable. The all-metal airframe used simple construction techniques accessible to builders without welding skills or composite experience required by alternative approaches. Aluminum skins riveted over formed ribs created structures inspectable throughout service lives without fabric removal or specialized equipment. Lycoming O360 engines, producing 180 horsepower, provided power for impressive short field performance. Takeoff runs under 400 feet and landing distances under 300 feet challenged tube and fabric competitors operating from identical strips. Useful loads approached 900 pounds in typical configurations, meaning full fuel, two adults, and camping gear departed together for extended backcountry explorations. The high wing and robust landing gear absorbed punishment from unimproved strips, while large tires distributed weight across soft surfaces. Cruise speeds settled around 110 knots slower than cross-country thoroughbreds, but adequate for regional operations where destinations mattered more than transit times between them. The Murphy Rebel demonstrated aluminum could conquer backcountry missions through thoughtful engineering rather than surrendering to tube and fabric by default for bush operations. But all metal and tube and fabric represented extremes on the construction spectrum. 
What happened when designers refused choosing sides and instead combined multiple materials exploiting each one's strengths while minimizing inherent weaknesses? Dan Denny folded aircraft wings in his driveway and revolutionized hangar requirements for an entire generation of builders. The Kit Fox Series 7 combined steel tube fuselage with fabric covering and ingenious wing folding mechanisms that transformed 40-foot wingspans into 8-foot widths, fitting standard garage bays. This wasn't compromise. It was liberation from monthly hangar rent that devoured budgets and forced difficult choices between flying and paying bills. Rotax 912 engines, producing 100 horsepower, delivered cruise speeds around 105 knots with fuel consumption under 5 gallons per hour, extending range beyond 500 nautical miles. Short field performance allowed operations from strips under 400 feet, accessing airports closer to destinations, and avoiding expensive fuel stops at major facilities. Wing folding took one person approximately 10 minutes using simple pins and light physical effort rather than complex hydraulics or specialized equipment. Fabric covering simplified annuals as mechanics could inspect internal structures without removing hundreds of rivets or using ultrasonic equipment searching for hidden corrosion. Insurance remained reasonable because tube and fabric construction demonstrated decades of proven reliability across thousands of examples operating in harsh conditions worldwide. Build times averaged 1,000 hours for experienced constructors familiar with welding techniques and fabric work. The Kitfox Series 7 proved tube and fabric construction combined with clever engineering could solve practical problems that pure performance specifications ignored completely. Hybrid construction was emerging from unexpected directions, demonstrating that mixing materials strategically could deliver capabilities no single construction method achieved alone. Chris Heinz believed aircraft construction should be teachable to anyone willing to learn, regardless of prior experience or specialized skills. The Zenith CH650 epitomized this philosophy through all metal construction using simple form skins and blind rivets requiring minimal tooling investment. This was aluminum democratized, no expensive pneumatic riveters, no welding equipment, no composite ovens demanding thousands in infrastructure. Blind rivets installed from one side allowed solo builders to complete entire airframes without helpers, holding bucking bars for thousands of rivets. Useful loads approached 450 pounds, while empty weight stayed near 700 pounds through efficient structure. Rotax 912 engines, producing 100 horsepower, delivered cruise speeds around 100 knots, with fuel consumption under 5 gallons per hour. Build times averaged 600 to 800 hours for first-time builders following detailed instructions that assumed zero prior aircraft construction experience. The kit arrived with pre-formed skins and pre-cut parts, eliminating measuring errors that plagued scratch builders working from plans alone. Insurance companies appreciated the proven safety record and simple inspection requirements that kept premiums reasonable. The Zenith CH650 demonstrated that aluminum construction could be simplified dramatically without sacrificing structural integrity when designers prioritized accessibility. Hybrid construction was about to show that combining multiple materials strategically created synergies impossible when designers restricted themselves to single construction philosophies. Tom Hamilton refused choosing between materials and instead combined them strategically to exploit each one's strengths while minimizing inherent weaknesses. The Glystar emerged as hybrid masterpiece, blending steel tube fuselage, composite cockpit pod, and aluminum wings into cohesive design that delivered capabilities no single material approach could match. This wasn't indecision. It was engineering maturity, recognizing that dogmatic material, loyalty sacrificed performance for ideology. The steel tube framework provided crash protection and ease of repair, while composite cockpit delivered smooth aerodynamics impossible with fabric covering. Aluminum wings simplified inspection and repair, compared to composite alternatives, while maintaining adequate performance through clean design and attention to detail. Useful loads exceeded 800 pounds, while cruise speeds reached 120 knots, from Lycoming O320 engines, producing 160 horsepower. Build complexity increased compared to single material approaches, as constructors mastered welding, composite layup, and aluminum riveting simultaneously during assembly. The Glaystar demonstrated that hybrid construction represented maturity rather than compromise when missions demanded capabilities no single material delivered optimally. Yet one final approach remained, proving that simplicity and accessibility could trump sophistication when designers understood their audience and refused overcomplicating solutions to problems that didn't exist. Ed Fisher designed aircraft for people who'd never built anything more complex than birdhouses but dreamed of flying their own creations. The Perceptor Ultra Pup stripped tube and fabric construction to absolute essentials. Steel tubes, fabric, and determination were sufficient for achieving flight without expensive tools or specialized skills. Empty weights barely exceeded 400 pounds, 
while useful loads pushed 350 pounds, creating machines that operated legally under ultralight regulations in many jurisdictions. Volkswagen conversions, producing 40 to 60 horsepower, provided adequate performance for cruise speeds around 60 knots, with fuel consumption under 3 gallons per hour, extending endurance beyond 4 hours. The open framework construction allowed visual inspection of every tube and joint without removing fabric or using specialized equipment during maintenance. Build times averaged 400 hours for first-time constructors, following straightforward plans that assumed no prior experience beyond basic hand tool proficiency. The Preceptor Ultra Pup closed the construction material circle by demonstrating that tube and fabric's simplest expression remained viable and valuable for specific missions and builders. These 10 aircraft proved material choice wasn't about superiority but mission alignment, showing that composite, aluminum, steel, and hybrids each dominated when designers matched materials to requirements rather than chasing fashion or ideology. Materials don't lie. Missions reveal truth. Speed demands composites accepting complexity. Backcountry operations need steel for giving mistakes. Aluminum balances compromises when versatility matters most. Which material philosophy matches your garage build? Smash that like button and tell us your choice. Drop comments, sharing construction experiences, and what you'd build differently. Hit subscribe so you never miss aviation engineering truths others avoid. Share this with builders believing one material rules everything. Watch the videos appearing on your screen and continue with us. Bye-bye.